Hi guys, this is just uh, hot off the press, breaking news. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are aware of the Confucius Institutes and uh, the CCP influence in Australia. It's great that a lot of Australians are have woken up these days. Uh, this only just happened a couple of hours ago. A university student in the University of Queensland, Drew Pavlau, uh, he could possibly, at the end of April, be expelled and banned from university because of a CCP member um, and I've got him on the line right now and uh, I don't know all the story and that's why I'm going to interview him and let him tell you guys what's really going on in the University of Queensland. So Drew, how are you going? Thanks Dave, thanks Dave for having me. No worries. Um, can you tell everyone at home what's going on? Yeah, sure. So I've been um, a pretty vocal voice at my university against the Confucius Institute and my university's links to the Chinese Communist Party through the Confucius Institute. In July 2019, I led a rally, um, basically supporting Hong Kong and calling for the Confucius Institute at UQ to be shut down while these massive human rights abuses were being perpetrated in Hong Kong not to mention across China, especially with the Uyghur Muslims and the Tibetan people, basically arguing for no links with the Chinese Communist Party while these human rights abuses were being perpetrated. And at this rally, I was assaulted by supporters of the Chinese government. And and um, there was like a huge, huge, uh, there, was a, there was a huge counter protest led by Chinese government supporters. It probably numbered 500, 600 people. It played the Chinese national anthem. I was assaulted a number, along with a number of other students who supported Hong Kong. We also led a sit-in of the Confucius Institute on that day. In the aftermath of that incident, Dr. Zhu Ji, the, the Brisbane PRC Consul General, he's also an honorary professor at the University of Queensland in a pretty unprecedented appointment. UQ appointed him to this honorary position at the university. And in the aftermath of the violence in which I was assaulted, I received hundreds of death threats along with a number of other students who supported Hong Kong. Um, in the aftermath of that, Dr. Zhu Ji issued a statement basically endorsing the violence against myself and the other pro-Hong Kong students as separatists. And, and that really intensified the death threats. My safety was really threatened. I had to sort of like, I had to go to class with UQ security. Unfortunately, UQ, instead of really supporting the student at this tough time when I was receiving death threats and was assaulted on, on, assaulted on campus, UQ really sort of tried to crack down on me. So I had my enrollment threatened. They tried to stop my future protests. Um, there were just a number of actions basically designed to try and harass and intimidate me into silence. In the wake of that, with the university not supporting me and not listening to our our demands regarding the Confucius Institute's closure due to the human rights abuses that are being perpetrated by the Chinese government. In the wake of that, I ran for the University of Queensland Senate, which is the governing board of the university, so I'd have a seat at the table to argue these things. And um, unfortunately, despite the fact that I was elected by a landslide of students, um, the university has continued to sort of like keep up its campaign of harassment against me in an attempt to sort of like silence my voice, I suppose. And what I just received the other day, it was one. It was one day after I had just organised a big charity, um, a big charity drive for students, delivering 250 free hampers to impoverished students at the university who needed staples and supplies during this time. It was one day after this big charity act. UQ sent me this large, like 200-page booklet comp composed of all these multiple allegations against me. Um, so many vexatious. So many vexatious accusations that are just basically there to cover them in expelling me from the university for my activism against the, their links to the Chinese Communist Party. So for my activism against the Chinese Communist Party and my public post as a UQ senator supporting Hong Kong and condemning Chinese government interference in Hong Kong, for those reasons, I believe UQ is trying to now expel me. And they've basically created this huge 100, 200 page booklet of allegations against me, most of them being vexatious and, and just 
and puffed up charges, basically as cover to expel me for their for their to, as cover for their real purpose to expel me for my activism against the CCP and the university's links to the CCP. Okay, okay. Thank you for coming on and, and telling us your story. Uh, for you guys at home, this is part of a concerted, organised effort by CCP members within Australia to uh, piece by piece silence uh, people who believe in freedom, uh, silence anyone who supports Hong Kong, Taiwan. Uh, I had a look through uh, Drew's Twitter and I had a look at his page. Um, and he's not doing anything wrong. Uh, what I what I can visibly see is all he's doing is speaking up against uh, authoritarianism and um, the mistreatment of people, not only in China, but now what we are starting to feel here in Australia because of our economic ties to the CCP. Um, for me, Dave. Yeah. For, for me, David, it's all it's all coming back to the human rights aspect of it. I know one major thing the CCP tries to do is slander their opponents of these sort of anti-China races. But for me, I'm pro-China. I, I love the Chinese people. I want their human rights to be respected. I come at this from this sort of like humanitarian, like left libertarian sort of angle. And I, I'm really like an anarchist. I basically just believe that human dignity has to be upheld like everywhere against all tyrannical rulers everywhere. I oppose all these sorts of governments. But yeah, you know, as the CCP does, it slanders its opponents as these anti-China China race, racists and whatnot. Mm. For me, it's not about that at all. It's just human rights, human dignity, upholding the rights of the Uyghur people, the Tibetan people, the Hong Kong people, the people of China itself, against a government that is trampling all over their inherent dignity and rights and freedoms. Yeah, 100%. Uh, the reason why I don't even bring that up is because I know that a lot of the people speaking up against the CCP are not racist. Uh, in fact, I'm quite left wing. I'm quite left leaning myself. Uh, I speak up, and and the the reason why a lot of people get confused, obviously, is because they're brainwashed by CCP uh, propaganda. Uh, in fact, a lot of my that like all these critics of the Chinese re government and its regime are then like turned into these sort of like virulent anti-Chinese racist in CCP propaganda but it's such a mistake it all relies on the mistaken idea that the Chinese government is the sole representative of the Chinese people and the conflation of the people and the government when in reality this is a government that does not represent its people it's a dictatorship it was never elected it doesn't represent them and it maintained its rule through force it kills it tortures dissidents it kills and tortures people who disagree with it yes one 100 percent. i actually went for a coffee with uh, an anti-ccp person from hong kong in australia and uh it's all they talk about <laughs> there's nothing else that they want to talk about is uh, what's going on in hong kong uh but the reason why i don't actually mention it is because uh, some of my best friends are Chinese, uh, and uh, I don't even, I feel like even mentioning it almost, it, it helps the CCP as well, by even mentioning saying, oh look, I'm not racist, because it kind of even says it, you know what I mean? I don't see anything racist about anything that you have done. Uh, there's nothing at all there. And, and if anything, especially Australia and America, the UK, uh, these are some of the, the most left-leaning countries on planet Earth. The fact that we even need to discuss it is a little bit ridiculous because we are the, the most left, leftist countries on Earth. Uh, in reality, we, re we really are. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for coming on. And uh, for, you, for you guys... For you guys at home, I hope you were able to hear Drew because uh, the audio wasn't that loud. I'm going to leave a, a, a link or two in the description so you can find him and check out whatever. I'll speak to him after this and find out what links he wants to put in the description. You can check out maybe his Twitter or his Facebook or whatever he wants to give to you guys. And um, I just thought I'd bring that to you right now because, you see, I saw... Uh, these uh, protests, the, these uh, pro-Hong Kong protests that they were 
were holding. I, I remember when was it last year sometime. Uh, July 2019. July last year, and yeah. uh, they were uh, there were a lot of pro CCP um, uh, members there that had actually attacked them, and I remember covering that on this channel as well. Uh, and it's more evidence of how we're not really standing up for our own rights. Small things like this, like Drew possibly being kicked off campus for speaking up about Hong Kong and Tibet. He's also got a photo of, of, of him uh, uh, protesting about Tibet. Uh, uh, these, this type of... Uh, it is free speech to some extent, but when you start silencing people like this, you take away everybody's freedom and uh, that's that's why it's so important to have people like Drew out there yelling and screaming and um, he's also doing it in a mature way uh, he's not like whip man <laughs> chuck, chucking a tantrum he's out there doing it a constructive way and he's consistently working I had a look through uh, his work and this this guy's putting in a lot of uh, philanthropic effort for the cause these people don't get paid for it uh, I very rarely get paid anything for this as well. So, um, thanks for coming on, Drew. And uh, if you like this video, make sure you click the subscribe button, click the bell icon, so you don't miss out on any future videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.